Welcome all you underhive dwelling scum. Yeah, there's an opening for you. Um, so, today I'm unboxing the Necromunda Gang Stronghold box. Um, it's a nice box. It's a, it's a very girthy box. Uh, so you can see my mucky uh, work top in the background. Uh, this thing only just about fits on my camera unless I hold it from the ceiling. Um, it's a big old box, I'm not going to lie. So, let's get straight to it. What do you get in the box? So, in this video I'm not just going to unbox it. I'm not going to talk about uh, necessarily just tips and tricks of how to assemble. Um, I'm also going to tell you how to satisfy your inner OCD. So you can even see on the back of the box, this is the suggested build. Right? Fine. Brilliant. It's a stronghold, right? You've got gates here. That means this should be kind of like a fortress, right? This thing should be shut down. It should be difficult to get into. Why is there all that gap behind? So what I have done is, this is my second box. I may have gone a little bit big into a few different Necromunda... Uh, terrain, pa um, terrain packs, um, but I like to build one, paint one, um, find out you know some little quirky things that you can do with it, things like that, before unboxing it on camera, um, so I have a little bit of experience in showing you guys what I have done, rather than just going, oh, well, this is what you get in the box, this is the instructions, brilliant. Any fool can read the instructions, unless you're me, um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make a stronghold that is relatively um, impenetrable. So I have worked out a way I can turn that into going there, which sounds easy, right? But you'll notice the wall curves that way, so it's not that easy. So what I have done is made a segment like this to go around. So it has four sides, which I will show you in a bit. And yes, I have painted it up a little bit different to the box art, but it's just the way I roll. Um, it's a fantastic box, not going to lie. And I'll tell you how compatible it is with Zone Mortalis terrain. So your tiles, will they slot in? And how? So let's check out my first lot of sprues, shall we? So I'll chuck that there. There we go. Now we can zoom in, get a bit more personal. So, loads of different options in this kit, as you would expect. So rather than just making a four-walled um, underhive stronghold, you can really customise. And I do like the fact that none of the parts look the same. It really does give you that ramshackle feel, where everything's just been cobbled together, welded together. Uh, that will do kind of uh, attitude. So this is a ladder, believe it or not. This is also a ladder. And this one here is very, very similar to the uh, Sector Mechanicus one. But I do like the fact that they've got like hubs of wheels and roll joists and things like that. But the general feel of this whole fortress is four walls which are relatively sturdy fairly uniform until you get to little bits like that standing up behind it and it has some diddy furnace looking thing now i have turned mine into a um like a food hopper so i would imagine if this was like kansas or something it would be used for grain but being in the underhive it's probably more like rat meat on a good day um, so it's probably best not to figure out what's in it but as you can imagine being games workshop it's all interchangeable um, so you'll recognize if you've got any zone Mortanus shapes like that that will slot into the top of your pillows so on the next brew you can see most of the wall segments have this on top, which, once again, echoes 
that shape, which does slot nicely into the top of your pillars. This is a mortalis, which we'll get to in a second. But we'll just have a quick little pair of what we got. So the railings, um, you notice they are slightly thicker there because they need to clip onto a thicker piece of terrain. Um, but most of it is pretty much interchangeable. This looks very, very similar to the, the top of your columns, your pillows that you'll get in the regular Zone Mortalis. But it's a lovely looking terrain set. So that piece is repeated again. Ooh, ah. So I do like the reinforced wall segments. So the walls will have a thick block kind of network underneath. And then you get like an archway, and then you get like a gantry kind of walkway on top. So that's like the thick blocky bit. And it's repeated again. There. Yes, yes, yes. And each one has a little bit of something different. So you might get a little bit of a, a valve thrown in there for good measure. But there your blocky wall segments again, which the top half will sit on. And you'll see in the destructions what I mean. So there's your watchtower, which you saw on the front of the box, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. It's great for a standalone little watchtower. Um, the ladders don't start until um, like the first floor. But obviously you can add more ladders and have it as a standalone. And that's what most of the walls look like. And it has a very nice gate construction, which they recommend to do not glue, because you can have a swinging gate. And that's the layout, like on the front of the box, which is all well and good and fine. If you had two packs of these, which initially I was not going to get into Necromunda, I picked up a box of this for 40k. It's been playing 40k for years, um, until recently. And if you had two boxes, I'm sure you could make a very large gang stronghold. But I still recommend you making a four-walled gang stronghold, because it just, it just feels nicer. So... It says about firing ports, uh, the gunk tank, which is probably about right, and the watchtower rules there. Um, but, so this is what I've made. So when I say a four walled piece of terrain, I literally mean, sorry about the noise. I swear it's the terrain, not me. <clears throat> I literally mean a four walled piece of terrain. So it is a impenetrable fortress. Um, but it wasn't without its hardships. So there's a couple bits you have to twist around. And like I said, the curvy sections, these sections here that should curve that way, one of them is inverted that way, which for the life of me, I cannot convert. Um, and fill in the only means of getting in this stronghold. A closer look, there we go. So you'll notice, if I remove the tower, I have built up these edges with some of the spare parts because these legs aren't gonna stop anything. Like my uh, my dad once said about John Wayne's legs, he's no real man. With a gap like that, it will never catch a pig. So, people were going to break into this stronghold via that way. So I've used the spare bits to stop them from getting in underneath the tower. So you notice the tower has curved sections there, which fit very nicely with these guys. Um, and you have a doorway here. But you notice I'm not using the swinging gate. 
So if you did the four walled stronghold as I have, you can use that particular section, or you could use it, he says, like that. So you can either have four walls or three walls and the swinging doors, which I think kind of looks cooler. It's totally up to you. And I haven't glued, as you can see, it all together, so I kept it modular like that. For the very reason, if I had two of these kits fully assembled, future proofing, see, always thinking ahead, I could make one incredibly large um, fortress, incredibly large um, stronghold. Or I can keep it modular like that, so I can interchange it with the Zone Mortalis pieces. Um, there we go, a bit more light on the subject. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So like I said, that comes to bits, that comes to bits, obviously that comes to bits, it all comes to bits. Um, nice having the, the tower as well, uh, as a standalone piece if you wanted to in the middle of your table, it's pretty nice. And as you can see, Said earlier on about uh, no stairs or steps or ladders or anything on the first floor. See, that's the first run, but this one has a ladder so they could get up there, not a problem. And if you think that there's quite a bit of a gap underneath the tower itself, I'll remove that. You can see I have a piece which does lock underneath the tower itself. I'll remove that section for you. So this piece here, if you wanted to stand alone, brilliant, quite a gap underneath. But if you wanted to have it as a stronghold that cannot be breached, that wall section slots in like so. Not using any magnets, it just slots in really comfortably. Um, it's pretty good going nowhere on my squeaky squeaky table um, <clears throat> and these pieces pretty much lock in to the wall sections so if you can see that that's locked in really nice and securely there we go it's going nowhere sir and somehow I still managed to get a dog hair even though my dogs aren't allowed upstairs. Hey ho ho. Right, yeah. So this is how I've managed to assemble it. So in my head, it makes more sense having a stronghold which is impenetrable. Uh, there is no easy way to get in unless someone opens the door for them. That's just my slight OCD, if you want to call it that. Um, and I think it's a brilliant kit. Lots of, lots of detail. Um, all I've done is just put simple washes on everything just to rub it up a little bit. But how does it fit to the Zone Mortalis tiles? Not too bad. So I just so happen to have a tile here. Only the one, you know, I haven't gone mad into Necromunda and bought a shed load of stuff or anything. So let's have a little looking. So, the wall sections. The wall sections, as you can imagine, fit in the regular wall sections of the walls and columns. But I have to say, it's not fantastic. You know, you can have a bit of a wiggle to get them in. It's, it's, it's okay but it's not amazing. It doesn't lock quite as well as the doors and pillars. It's okay. I mean, if you're a bit ham-fisted, you might knock them over, but it's fairly clear to see where they're supposed to go. So there is a bit of a wiggle there, unlike the normal pillars and tile, uh, pillars and columns. So you can lock those in very, very nicely. And these bits, will lock in there like so, which will aid you 
to where they're going. So if these are between two pillows, I mean just next to one pillow is fairly sturdy, but without them they are a little bit wobbly, I'm not going to lie. They're not quite as tight as these, but they do fit on the boards. Um, and the corner sections do lock in as well, but once again, not amazingly well. That's where they go. It's, it's okay, it's pretty good. Uh, compared to these ones, um, I would say they're about 80%. Once you've got these sections in, there's a little bit of a wiggle, but they're not bad, not bad. These are 100%, these are about, I don't know, 80%, like I said. So they, they do fit on the tiles, they're not bad, so they are fairly interchangeable from the regular Zomo Talis stuff if you don't convert too much, which is nice. So you could have uh, a single gang stronghold, like I said, if you make the four walled section like I did, um, they it will fit on there, it will fit on there. Um, it's almost like they thought about it, you know, like a square sitting on the square. It's pretty nice and, like I said, interchangeable. So if you really wanted the fit on there, you can. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's the same height. Uh, it's the same style, as in there's like rivety potholes and notches taken out of it, and it's it, it, it's an extension. It's an extension. It doesn't fit seamlessly into, and I don't think it was meant to. Um, so you can see it's part of the same world, but probably not made by the same architects. Um, you get a lot on this box. It does take up the majority of one whole tile. So that is uh, your foot square. And so you do get quite a lot of plastic in the box. Um, am I gonna keep the second box to make another stronghold exactly the same? Possibly not. I might just use it for bits, um, stacking on stuff. Um, but I am interested to see whether it would sit on top quite nicely without putting these gantries and walkways and just keep these gantries and walkways just to use between um, normal columns. So, just so happen to have a massive box of train next to me so I could have it across this piece. So. I'm going to try that and see if I can make some nice conversion work in the future. I might even put up a video about that if anybody's interested. Um, but it's a really nice box. It's sturdy terrain. It's fairly interchangeable. It locks fairly well. Not as tight as these guys. But then again, if you're stacking several of these on top of each other, um, you do want it pretty tight. Whereas this is only going to be one story, apart from the watchtower, obviously. But that thing is a good old sturdy girl, and that's what we like, especially in the end hive. But other parts do fit nicely with it as well. Um, so you've got your angled pieces of pipe that you could stick on the front of there, like you could stick on these. Um, the handrails, the guardrails, and things like that are fairly interchangeable. So for example, one I haven't painted up yet, they are the same width, same diameter, and they are pretty universal. I haven't found anything that really does stand out like a sore thumb uh, from the Zone Tower stuff, um, sticking it, um, you know, from the columns and walls, uh, the stairs, even the marketplace, they all look like they really belong on this terrain. Uh, as an overall set, so all the zone tower stuff, really, really, really happy with it. Um, the fact that it's so interchangeable and it locks on a tile really does float my boat. But like all the um, all the stairs, as you can see from previous, are the same height. So you know that would be fine. It's not much of an issue. And I'm keeping everything fairly modular. So this is the 
Um, the only wall section I have left the corner on and glued it on. I don't know why I did that. I just did that on one of them. But you can have uh, three sections like I have um, separate. But I do like the fact that even though the doors don't look like when you see one of them, they would take up that gap. Two of them together do take up the gap and it feels feels so nice when everything fits perfect like that. Um, love the detail. Like I said, I was very, very basic with the paint scheme. Just throw some washers on there and dirty everything up. But there are lots of details that you could pick out. For example, I haven't picked out little lights, things like that. It's a nice hit of an airbrush or something. Really would make these things look like they're glowing and popping. Um, whereas I want things to look like it's nigh on abandoned and misused. Um, like the devil, the devil in the detail. Like you see little rivets, um, little valves, things like that. And little gauges. Knock the light off. Nope, that made it worse. Little gauges, like that and there. You can pick out loads and loads of detail, make it as clean as you like. But with all the little bits chipped out like that, you could go massively to town with rust effects. Um, I think it's a great kit. I know um, previously assembling these things, I found that you can put magnets in there. And quite a few people online have told me. Um, and that's another thing, the Necromunda community is really, really good. You guys are super, super nice. Obviously, I haven't been playing very long. I have been playing 40k for about 20 years. Um, falling in, in, in love with more skirmish games these days. Just the way it goes. I've always heard of Necromunda, gave it a go, loved it. And I've always, always been a big fan of the terrain. Um, but you cannot magnetise the insides of here. So if you wanted to fit pipes or whatever, like so, it's the only thing that doesn't really mesh. It's the only thing that doesn't really gel. Um, and that's fine because I can't imagine there'd be pipes like that inside of your stronghold. But yeah, great kit, fully interchangeable with the columns, the stairs, the gantries, walkways, things like that. But please put in the comments below what would I do with my second set. Like I said previously, um, I know if I've got spare gantries, that's really nice as walkways from one pillar to another. But what am I going to do with the lower section? Do I just assemble it and then these guys can um, stand on top of another row? Um, I, I guess because they um, slot fairly well on here, you could build up these wall sections and slot these guys on the top. Like I said, they don't click massively well, but they could fit on there. I can go two stories, so I can go another story up um, with these columns for these to sit on. But I don't know that they're going to sit very well on another set of these. So it'll be interesting to see what I can do with that. But yeah, uh, hopefully this video made sense. Not just me mad rambling as per usual. Um, just rating the box showing you the contents of my personal opinion that it's pretty easily to convert uh, to making a four walled stronghold because it makes more sense because why have a stronghold if you've got no back half like in the front box on the picture there's no back half of that stronghold so yes it's hardly uh, armoured on the front brilliant but what's stopping that ganger from just walking around the back just helping themselves so that's why I prefer four walls. You can do four walls or three walls and swinging doors, in my personal opinion. That's the coolest, because it's more like a sci-fi spaghetti western. Swinging doors are the best. Um, and I, I can imagine doing like a, maybe like a bar or something, because um, 
that section wouldn't be tied up. So maybe I can just put some um, chairs down, bar stools down, and this could be like a bar area um, with a nice sign outside and swinging saloon doors perhaps. Um, I could always glue it to the tile and convert it and make it a proper, proper bar feature. Uh, but yeah, your, your opinions are welcome and any constructive criticism on any of my videos are always, always welcome. Thank you for watching this short video. I hope you're staying safe, you wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, please like if you haven't done already. And please subscribe for some more great content. There will be more Necromunda, Rust and Filth to come, I am sure.